I know I'm Bob Marchand from Wake for Rhode Island, and I'm here to talk about a new uh, home closure device that we've been using for about a year now. Um, we performed about 4,500 makeup procedures with new zip line. Uh, for about the last year, we currently have like, disclosures and stock options and have a straight makeup and so on. One of the things I started thinking about uh, wound closures was we used perennial in the past. We started traditionally with closures with staples like we learned in residency. Uh, we switched to perennial for, for uh, uh, better wound closure and better cosmetics. And then we started seeing uh, incisions that came back looking like this. And I got to tell you, when you get a couple wounds that look like this, you spend a lot of time on the phone with very anxious patients. A lot of time on the phone with therapists, and a lot of time on the phone with primary care physicians who all want to put them on antibiotics. And then the treatment is usually high dose steroids, which is kind of challenging to do that uh, post operatively. So we switched. Uh, at that time, we were using Aerobon and a subcutaneous enclosure. So there are clinical studies that allowed me to look at zip line. There's really about six studies out. It doesn't take much to look at. Some are clinical based on lab animals, and there's some really good studies based on uh, lead posters from Octus and the Society. Uh, when you review them, the zip line has better speed, better consistency for providers. It has a much higher patient satisfaction compared to staples. Uh, some of the studies show a higher range of motion early on. Staples tend to pull, and uh, the zip line does not. Uh, one of the studies suggests that there's a lower readmission rate and a lower complication rate in staples. Uh, it reduces um, some of the unnecessary phone calls about staple irritation and uh, it reduces some of the office visits for wound issues associated with staples. One of the studies uh, shows when they compared bilateral uh, total needs, one with zip line, one with staples, 72% of patients had greater range of motion. Um, they had less pain associated with zip line versus the staples. And on the bilateral study, 92% of the patients favored the zip line versus the staples. Um, the zip line is placed, and usually you can take the zip line off anywhere from two days to two weeks. We typically take it off. Uh, the patient takes it off around two and a half to three weeks at all. So, in one of the studies uh, quoted below, the lower wound and radiation rate, less questions from uh, the nurses, 45% reduc reduction in post discharge incision related activity in the clinics. Uh, in the past, when we had staples, the patients would always come in, they want to keep it covered, they would hesitate with therapy because the staples are full. The zip line has more of a uniform uh, transmission of force and it doesn't have that same pulling effect. <coughs> And we had, you can notice a decrease in the clinical rate of visits. This is something we played with. It's not really a real study yet, but there's a machine called the Kent Imaging Machine that uses infrared imaging. It basically looks like an iPad and it does pulse oximetry with uh, pictures. And so we played around with it a little bit. Our wound center has it. It's been used in plastics to look at flaps. So this is a typical zip line, live image of surgery. The completion of surgery, turning it down. The image with the Kent oxygen saturation, you can see that the, it's got uniform oxygen saturation for the routine total knee. This kind of shows the effects of staples, how it kind of crimps the skin. Blue is not very good. Orange is obviously a little better for oxygen saturation. And these are sutures down here. So we played with it a little bit. Um, it's kind of interesting. We don't have a lot more data than just delivering looking at it. So I tried to use the perennial back in 2016-17. We switched in 18 to the work closures. We eliminated some particular sutures. Uh, we'll, go, we'll go through how we close. Uh, it's a well-engineered device that provides superior wound uh, protection. Uh, it's easy to integrate into practice. It saves all our time. We don't have to wait for the perennial to dry. Patients love it. I can tell you that PAs love it. They don't have to pull out staples. Patients love it. Uh, physical therapists love it. Um, and to date, we've really had great success with it in about 900 cases. So how I close the arthrotomy, we usually use a zero stratifix. Subcutaneous, we have a couple different PAs. Some like the 2 stratifix, some like 2 micro. Then we put the zip line on. Uh, the zip line, if you haven't seen it, it's Basically, a little device you put on each side of the wound and you have little clips and you 
fully closed. Um, and then over that, we put a dry sterile dressing, ABP pad, tegaderm. For hips, it's the same closure, ABP pad, tegaderm. For the total knee, just the protocol we use, we use a tourniquet. Uh, mostly for the partial knees, for cementing, we do a lot of uncemented knees, and we won't use a tourniquet much there. We get oral transaminic acid in the morning, and then one intraarticular transaminic acid inclusion. Aspirin for three weeks, zipline in the OR, ABD, Tegaderm, they ambulate on the same day. The unis will go home that day, the total knees will probably go home the next day, the bilateral total knees will probably go home the day after. If there's any staining on the dressing, we change it at the time of discharge. Uh, typically, they come in around day 10, 14 for a post op visit. We change the dressing, leave the zip line open, and the patient takes the zip line off at about three weeks of home. So the hip is really not much different. Oral transaminic acid, aspirin, zip line in the OR, take it there. We do a lot of the anterior total hips, so it actually is quite, quite a nice cosmetic uh, scar that we see. Again, you can see them back. They typically go home in about a day, day and a half. You can see them back in about day 10, 14. You leave it open and they clean it off in about three weeks. Surgical pearls, uh, make sure your fascia closure is tight. Make sure the skin, skin is clean and dry. You have to apply the zip line so if it's wet, it won't stick. And you put pressure on the skin and then you pull the tags and reapproximate the last two to three millimeters of closure. One of the things that we did learn is you can't overeducate the patients. When we first started, the patients, this was a new look to their wound, and the patients get a little nervous about it. The physical therapists initially were a little nervous, and the nursing staff were a little nervous because they'd never seen it. So the idea is to educate them. We usually tend to educate them at the time of discharge. If you give them a lot of information at pre-op, they, they won't remember it. So educate them at the time of discharge and educate them again at the time of the first visit. So these are a few samples. This is a partial knee. This is a very uh, routine closure, partial knee. This is day 14. Take the stitches out. Up there we have nylon stitches. We just leave it open. These little plastic clips, sometimes up in our area in Rhode Island, they wear long pants, it gets caught, so we'll put a, a sleeve over it, just like a stocking net, so it doesn't get caught on the pants. And this is three months later. Simulate totally at the time of closure, day 14, this is five months out. And total hip, simulate, it's the anterior total hip. We use a robot, so there's little incisions up here. It's an anterior total hip. Post-op day 14, and this is three months. The only thing I can tell you too is that early on, patients, this was new, but as the wounds come back, patients come back, therapists come back, they say they can identify our total needs based on the wound characteristics, um, which is kind of interesting, and the patients all come back, and I'm going to tell you they really love the wounds. So in conclusion, it's a, it's a quick dressing, uh, closes it with superior cosmetic results, Really low maintenance for the uh, office and for the PAs. There's no staples to pull out. The patients peel it off. Uh, gets out of the patients out of the room quicker. You don't have to wait for the perineum to dry. It's safe, predictable. I got to tell you, the patients really love it. That's really it. Any, are there any questions? Oh, we have questions. Questions in the box. Any questions? Any questions? Uh, I have a question about this application and trauma setting. Ever have problems with uh, blistering? Say one more time. Any problems with getting blistering? You know, you're being pulled on them. No. So, so what the the sequence of the evolution of wound care was staples and sutures. Then I went to a benzoin and steri strips with a subcuticular closure. This is many years ago. That was torture. The blisters. I got more blisters with benzoin and steri strips. Yeah, and that was terrible. The blisters were awful. And then we went to perineal, and perineal, I gotta admit, it worked well until you get these rashes, and it's sort of unpredictable, they're hard to treat, patients get really freaked out on it, and uh, it's quite expensive. So we switched this, we're very happy. So I haven't seen any blisters. You may see, not a reaction, you, see, you may see a mark in three weeks where the tape was, but it's a tape mark, it's not a reaction at all. Any other questions? Wow. Question about the cost. 
cost. Everything costs money. So <clears throat> you have to work with the hospital. So the Staples, one of the studies, I would encourage you to get these studies. There's six of them. There's really three that are orthopedically important. There's some cardiac studies, not really that. Read the two in orthopedics. But with the cost, so the cost of Staples ballpark is around ten dollars a staple gun. Uh, perennial, uh, perennial is about it's about ninety dollars to hundred. This is probably about fifty to sixty dollars. So when they when they looked at one of the studies, it was in the East Society. It's a poster. When they looked at this, the cost, so the cost initially up front was a little more, but then they averaged in the visit to take out the staples, the phone calls, the staple irritation, and then the patient satisfaction. It kind of really convinced me. Yeah. So it is it is more than staples, but I wouldn't have staples on my skin. So you said that you see the patient back 10 to 14 days post-operatively, and then you remove that, you have them remove it another one to two weeks. Did you initially remove that at 10 to 14 days and found it was too early, or you've always done it that way? So it's a good question. When you put it on, it's very inherent. So in my opinion, at 10 days, it's kind of, the wound is still kind of sensitive to be peeling off tape. So I'm not real anxious to do that. And if you leave it open, it's sealed. They can shower, showering and washing. By three weeks, it just peels right off without any anxiety on the patient's part. Um, it's like a scary story. Yeah, it's just, it just comes off much easier. And I get a little worried in 10 days that I'm going to peel it off and you know, disrupt the skin. Um, and the patients get nervous. It's the first time they've seen it. And now you get to peel it off. And patients really believe the only thing that's holding together is the zip line. They don't believe you put sutures in, so they get a little nervous. I just leave it for three weeks. How are you doing? So, how often do you get any uh, zip line breakage or any inversion at all of the tissue? Does that ever occur? Can you get that question a lot? I have three of my PAs right here. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, no, so they, they close, it flows really well, the gap is about two to three millimeters, and you apply it, and you just clip it as you go down, and it pulls it right together. So it doesn't hurt at all. It depends how you close deep. Hey, you, are, you are running a substitute board as well? No. So can subcutaneous. So a neurotomy, depends how deep the wound is, maybe a couple of micro subcutaneous, but no subcutaneous. No running fish. Yeah. Yeah. So subcutaneous is a 2-0, but it's not subcutaneous. It's not so that really that three really you feel like that's still, I mean, you're still running a fish as well, right? Or so. well, you can have a run interrupted, which is slow, you can run that. It's not subcutaneous. It's not like the 3-0 bike that we used to do subcutaneous. Okay. That's 2-0. Okay. It's quick.